destruction. I'm, I'm summarizing. Peace and safety and then sudden destruction will come upon them, and they shall not escape. Well, who's they? It's the unrighteous. Because it goes on and says, but you, brethren, are not of the darkness. You are the light that this day should overcome you as a thief. So there's your hint oh, that you're not part of the they. Right, so mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. so that's my theory. All right, but then but so, so then I I don't know you know but then I don't know if you've heard Pastor T D Hale's vision. He was on Rick Wiles' True News, and his uh, dream from the Lord showed uh-huh. Obama in the White House when the United States is nuked by Russia. Oh really? Uh, I, amen. I've got, for you. I've got something for you tonight, brother. That. Tick-tock, baby. Fresh. Are you going to yeah, be no, that, I mean, we, we could get in trouble on this conversation. We do we want to continue this? this are you going to hey, be hey. at the uh, 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 Prophecy Conference in, uh, in in Orlando? Are you going to be there? Oh, sure. I'm definitely going to be there. Absolutely. I'll, be there. Yeah, I'll yeah. find you. Yeah. I'll find you. Yeah, and you I'm have to find me. We'll do a radio show out of yeah. <laughs> oh, great. I, I, I'll do a live one right in the middle of the, the hunt. People be throwing tomatoes. It'll well, be well, well, wait wait till you hear this. Now, this is really something. This just came about two hours ago to me. And it, it is it is so I – mean, I, can, I can call you John, right? I can still call you John. Oh, right? yeah, yeah my, na- my name is John. And don't forget oh, to get oh, – Oh, John. Oh, yeah. I can get away with at least half of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, All my, right. yeah. But anyway, by the way, uh, Marv Rosenthal, uh, dear, dear brother, and, and for what he saw and is still sees and the price that he had to pay uh, in seeing that and with the American Board of Missions to the Jews and uh, so forth and having, uh, uh, you know, been basically fired from that position. I mean, he, he paid a big price for, for what he felt before the Lord he saw. And he truly did see that, and I really commend him. We're we're very close to pre rappers and, 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 and ourselves. We're a little we're not like a lot of post trippers type people. We're we're more we're very, very flexible. But what happened in the last twenty four hours here, John, is amazing. And I should forward this to you, uh, so that you can actually see this. It's very visible. But in our book, the new book that's coming out on the signs in the heavens. And on the earth. And by the way, this was given with Stan Johnson at the Prophecy Club. A dear brother there did some further follow-up with me, and we talked to Stan about Dudaman and so forth, and and and, and all this. Uh, I recognized one thing on our uh, particular chronology. We targeted a certain time frame that we said we felt was exceedingly optimal in so far as the fulfillment of the 70th week goes so forth and so on. And that time frame, you know, happens to be, I'll be very specific with you, between 2018 and 2025. Uh, we have the beginning of Adam's creation, about 33-year difference from Bishop Usher, who said it was in 4004 BC because of when did King Herod, when was he consumed of worms, when was Jesus Christ really born, uh, it had to do with Herod's death, uh, Josephus is involved in this, and it turns out that Jesus was born in 4 BC. Well, astronomically, okay, and otherwise, it, we have enough evidence now to indicate that Jesus Christ was born between 1 BC and 1 AD, which is basically one year, and that Herod died at the earlier, uh, uh, you know, kind of like in the middle of that year, uh, astronomically. And that Jesus' birth seems probable to have been on Passover. In other words, he was born on a Passover, and he died on a Passover. He was exactly 33 years of age. Now, I know some say, well, no, it was 30 AD. It was 32 AD. I know it was 33 AD. Uh, And, of course, Tommy Ives and these guys, they believe it was 33 AD. The Catholics believe it was 33 AD. Uh, I affirm that it was 33 A.D. as well, based upon the astronomical phenomena that can be dated from that point in time. Josephus got it wrong because he did not see uh, some things in the history of Herod when he actually uh, was consumed with worms and when the eclipse took place at that time. So suffice it to say, okay, that when bills came out, and you're familiar with the blood moons, the tetrods that are coming on in 2014 and 2015, right? Okay. Well, there turns out 
to be two sets of triads, which nobody's talking about. Okay? The two sets of triads are even far more significant, I mean, beyond belief, because not that they, you know, can dwarf Passover and Sukkot, but Passover begins to meet the 70th week of Daniel, the treaty begins on a Passover. And Sukkot is the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. It will, 1260 days from any Passover is the Feast of Sukkot, is the Feast of Tabernacles. That is the abomination of desolation in the middle of the week. Now, check this out. Now, this is really amazing. Okay, so these triads, well, they're like bookends. There's three of them that occur right at the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018. There's three there, okay? Then there are three more at the uh, 8th of April, okay, 2024, and one in 2026 and another one. The, the three that are beginning in this point, okay, occur on a, a Jewish holiday called the Restoration of Israel's Day. Okay. And then the middle one occurs, okay, uh, in, in 120 days from Passover. Very significant. But the last, okay, and what's significant is that in the middle, the middle one, okay, <laughs> this is amazing, there is a total solar eclipse. Check this out, brother. This solar eclipse, uh, and any solar eclipse during that entire seven, eight year period from 2017 to 2026, uh, uh, there's only, guess what? Two solar eclipses that will appear on any land mass period. In other words, all the rest are on the ocean. There's only two that appear on land. And guess what land they appear on? The United States of America. Are you ready for this? The one comes on the year 2017. It comes in from the Pacific, right over Oregon, right over, you know, Wyoming, right over Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, straight over the Madrid fault line straight over and out the door at South Carolina. Okay, in 2024, oh, by the way, you know what date that, I mean, that, this is amazing. The, 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 last, the last three blood moons are incredible. We're not talking solar eclipses now, we're talking blood moons, but the last three blood moons that appear over Israel as a bullseye blood moon appear, the last three at the end of this time frame, appear on Purim. You know what that date is? That's the victory over the Antichrist, Haman, who tried to kill all the Jews. Right. Is that not odd? Okay, I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying. And then what about that last solar eclipse? Guess where it goes? It goes right over Dallas, Texas. <laughs> right straight through the other one. If you're living in southern Illinois, near the, the, the heart of the Madrid fault line, it's like a giant. Gigantic X has been made over that part of the earth. Guess what day that thing hit? And this is like a seven minute total solar eclipse over the whole United States of America, all over all of North America, and it crisscrosses these two, literally crisscross right at the heart of the Madrid fault line. Are you ready for this? like an X. One of my spotters wrote me from Dallas. This X mark of these two solar eclipses are just north of Cairo, Illinois, south of Pyramid State Park. Pyramid, see that. And just west of, guess what? Giant City, Illinois. And Devil Kitchen Lake. And he also found a rather inconspicuous little spot adjacent to all this called Cedar Lake. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild and cut stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. You've got the pyramid, the giant city, the devil's lake, and Cedar Lake. All there in southern Illinois. 
by Cairo. Hello, right? And this is the center of where these two things are going to go. But guess what date that thing takes place on? The last solar eclipse over Babylon the Great. It takes place on the 8th of April, which just so happens to be one Nisan, the date that the Hebrews were given, the Hebrew Ju uh, a Jubilee calendar. It is the first day of the religious year of the Hebrews. And another thing, all the rabbis believe Adam was created on that day. Hmm. Man's days are numbered. Is that telling us that is when man will have his time up? I'm just saying. Right. It's very peculiar, these two solar eclipses. They only happen over one place on the planet, over a seven, eight year time frame. Only one place in the very heart of this nation. And over the Madrid Fault. I mean, right over the top of it, where most of the activity is going on right now. I have another map. And it clearly delineates Southern Illinois. Don't ask me why, but it's just there. And both of these solar eclipses go right over the top of that place right over the top. X marks the spot with the last day being the first day of the Hebrew calendar when it was given to Moses on the Jubilee cycle, as well as the date that Adam was created, that the rabbis hold to be this day. Isn't that astounding? <laughs> That's a huge <laughs> wow, isn't it? I mean, that just yeah. happened today, brother. I mean, is God doing things here? Is he trying to tell us something? <laughs> That's awesome. It, 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 God. That, that is so odd. When you see this, brother, I mean, I, I mean, time to tell you, I need to send this. To you. Give, me, give me your uh, what's your what's your email address? I'll forward this to you I, right now. Yeah, I, uh, I sent you the uh, the, the uh, uh, headline there from Paula Garrett at the Toledo Bible Examiner. So you'll have my oh. email there. In, in, okay, in your the Toledo Bible, Bible Examiner. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I just got it. I just got it. But isn't yep. that incredible? What do you think of that? I mean, is that that's that's awesome. Really that's I mean, awesome. I, mean, I mean, two of these blood moons occur on the defeat of Haman. What's all that about? The end of the if, if that could be the end of the week, that's when Antichrist is defeated. And the blood moons are talking about the defeat of Antichrist. I mean, how could that be? And how could these two told and, and, and listen, I checked everything in NASA. I went through absolutely every eclipse imaginable. And none of them are on a landmass, barely skirting a landmass. The, the only places where the sun is turned to sackcloth, okay, is over guess where? And not just any place, brother, over the very heart of the nation where the Mississippi and the Ohio rivers and the Missouri rivers all conclude. I mean, they're all there. I mean, it's, it's astounding. It's, it's just my, it absolutely is mind-numbing. When you look at, and then they occur over places like Pyramid, Devil's Lake, and, and the Cedar, and all of <laughs> I just said, good night. What are we doing here, man? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know what, hey. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing, okay. Fort Worth, on AM 1480, uh, all through the Metroplex and, and Central Texas and Southwestern Oklahoma. So for the benefit of those new listeners who never heard the earlier program, let's take the next several minutes and just recap mm -hmm. the, the key points of the dreams that the Lord gave you on the night of December 28th and 29, 2011. Let's start with mm -hmm. the first one. Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to say, first of all, that uh, everything that you said prior to this was amazing. We have gone over the morality cliff, and we really, really, really need to start seeking God right now. Uh, these dreams begin to come to me, as you've already said, in December uh, of, of uh, 2011. And uh, the very first dream that I had uh this in depth was that uh, I went to bed that night as, as normal, uh, not really a whole lot on my mind. And um, 
all of a sudden, uh, sometime in the middle of the night, the Lord began to deal with me about America. And all of a sudden, I saw myself going across America, suspended in midair, going across America. But there was absolutely no fear whatsoever. And I knew that inside there, there was something different about this dream. I just knew. And then all of a sudden, I began to see how that the land was... Um, looked like it had been bombed something had hit it and it did not look like the same and i saw as we had talked before about how that i saw people standing around their homes they were weeping they were crying holding on to each other and then the words and i'll never forget these words i heard uh, them saying this should never have happened and uh, they kept repeating that over and over again and I knew that destruction of some sort had hit America and that people uh, were beginning to uh, riot they were beginning to uh, plunder places that they could uh, they were begging God for mercy uh, they were um, running into the stores grabbing necessities things that they needed like you know, uh, water and anything they could get their hand on to sustain them. And uh, uh, as I told you before, I even began to see people killing one another and, and, and death had hit. Uh, people started shooting and killing one another. But then the scene changed and when it changed, uh, I was standing on the backside of the White House. And this is where it began to get interesting because I looked up and I seen the President of the United States standing on the balcony. And in his hand, he was holding a shotgun. And then uh, to my left, I heard a loud scream. And I turned my head and when I did, uh, I saw a, a, a eagle flying up, up in the heaven, just absolutely a beautiful sight in the dream. But then I saw the president of the United States take that shotgun and shoot that eagle out of the sky. And it just fell right down on the ground. I looked up at him again, and, and he had just this real smirk on his face, just a very arrogant smirk on his face. And, and these were the words I heard, I've done it, and I will not have to deal with it in, in my administration. Then all of a sudden, I just like it was dead silent. And then I heard the voice of God, and I know was tell the people that this is my will and that this is my hand both upon the generation of the righteous and upon the cursed. The righteous, he said, will find their way and know what to do, but the cursed will wander about with no compass. Then I heard the words, the cup is full. And I believe that's the point that we are now. The cup is full. So then from that point on, I knew that we were coming down to a show that I could sense it. It was, it was going to, you know, in the dream, I knew it was going to come between the, the good and the evil, the good versus evil. And I saw the scene change, and I saw people gathering in their homes that were not destroyed, places um, that looked like they, they, were, they were kneeling down, they were praying, they were seeking God, they were praying in the Spirit, they were asking God for mercy. Then I heard the voice of the Lord again say, Tell my servants of my handmaidens that a special anointing would reside upon them in the last days. And hold not back the voice, but speak your hearts. For out of them are the issues of life. And then the voice said, speak, Pick up the man of prayer, cover yourself with it, find a secret place to cover my servants in prayer, like true news. You know, ever since my first interview that that we had with you, I have not ceased to pray for true news and, and, and pray for your ministry and pray Thank for you. the people that listen to it because I feel like that we're in a very, very special time that it's going to take a very, very special anointing to get through it. And so the mantle, I heard the voice say, pick up the mantle of prayer, cover yourself with it, even, even me, find yourself a secret place, cover my servants, and the uh, that stand for truth in prayer. And so I, the voice that I hear, I see their hearts and the desire to understand and know more. And their eyes have been anointed with a special anointing to see. Those are listening to your broadcast.
they're going to know the truth. They're going to know what is uh, right and what is wrong and what's being said by these ministries that are out there. And, and I want to say to your listening audience that if anybody, if there's anybody out there that, that should be supported, it is true news because they uh, absolutely speak the truth without fear or favor. And so the voice said, others are blinded to my word and all things will be revealed in their due course. And that there would be a supernatural wave of my spirit that would come up upon this generation and the final voices are in the land to speak one last time. And then the, the final that, voices are in the land to speak yes, one last time. Yes, yes. God's going to give them a final call. A final, a final call. And brother, I believe that that's the point that we are right now. True news, and others that are speaking the truth, they're in the land. This is the final call. There, there, there's, there's not, you know, there's nothing else. Hard. They're saying happy days are here again, and and uh, they're telling the people that you know we're going to prosper and come out of it, and everything's going to be back to normal. But that's not what God's saying. That's not that's what right. the Lord is revealing. Let, let's move on because I, I, we've yeah. got to get to this last dream, but we, we still have to cover the second dream when the mm-hmm. people were taken into captivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was the very next night. Um, and it was uh, almost as if uh, when I went back to sleep, I picked up, you know, where uh, left off sort of, because the very next night was the dream when I saw uh, the American people going into slavery. That's, that's, I don't know any other way to put it. And in this dream, I came into a wooded area and I saw some people camping. And it was actually two different families. One of them was an older couple and the other one had children. And they were standing uh, you know, by their tents. And the people, when I looked at them, they looked like they were very tattered, very, you know, like they'd been there for a while. And uh, they looked like they had not taken a bath or anything. And there was jugs of water that were outside of their tent. They were trying to light a little fire. And uh, then all of a sudden, it was as if I went up a little higher. I saw some federal officials coming up from the wooded area, they come in there and surround the families, and they they handcuffed uh, they handcuffed the, the adults, and they led them away. And of course, the children was crying. And then I saw the two elderly people that were uh, in my dream. I knew it was their their parents that they they took them to the car, and I saw the federal agents, and they said uh, when they said when they came in up to the tent, they said we're from the United States government. Uh, you're under arrest. That's what I heard. And I knew that these people had been running to, to get away from being arrested. And uh, they then the scene changed, and, and they, they took them to some kind of a, like a uh, processing place. To, uh, and I was standing in front of the building, and to me it looked like something that, that I'd seen from the pictures of, the, you know, from the days of Hitler. Hitler. I, of course, I, I'm not old enough to But I've seen the pictures, you know, I've seen what it looked like. And so the building looked like it had been modernized or updated and painted. And uh, they, um, and it looked like, um, you know, at one time it could have been like a military base or something. And uh, so then I saw them taken inside and, and they were processed and they were fingerprinted. But also the part I was on the side of the guns, I saw these rail cars. And, uh, but I didn't go into the rail car, uh, but I, I did, uh, I didn't see the inside of them, but it, in, it frightened me. I, I knew that from that very dream alone, that we were headed down a path that we, there's no reverse of this. And I felt like I had entered into death camp and, uh, what I saw it literally you know, it is sickened me, and and I knew now. I know now by what I'm seeing, they want to, you know, change our thinking. They want to get us to think in their way, and this could be very well part of that. You know? Total communist fascist takeover of the nation. Take, uh, yes. And the resistors uh, rounded up no, and put into concentration the camps. The resistors taken in. That's exactly right. And there's no other way of saying it. All right, let's, let's, let's move on. You had a third dream, and this is the one 
uh, about Governor Romney being blocked. This uh, you had this stream in in the summer of 2012, mm-hmm. and you yes. saw him being blocked in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, what what uh, what I saw there is um, I had uh, again I was suspended. I I was like going across Ohio until I was standing uh, there in front of the uh, Kirkland uh, Temple. Which is a, a Masonic temple in Ohio. Which is a Masonic temple, and uh, I, uh, from what I gathered, it was one time a Mormon place. Uh, oh, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I said a Masonic. Excuse me. I meant to say Mormon. I apologize. Uh, it, it was a Mormon temple, not Masonic, a Mormon temple. Yeah, because I, I have no idea what it is now today, because right. I haven't done no research on it other than what I saw. I did uh, <clears throat> see it, and then I went inside of the building, and when I went inside of the building, there uh, stood uh, Mitt Romney, and what I saw is I saw like two staircases, you know, going up uh, to the platform, around the platform, and uh, all of a sudden I saw this creature-like, Egyptian-like creature like a falcon-like creature uh, that you see in pictures from Egypt. Mm-hmm. And everywhere that... A hybrid. He would, yes, yes. Everywhere he would walk, uh, he would go, that thing would block him from ascending up the staircase. So Governor Romney was being blocked by this Egyptian falcon god hybrid mm-hmm. creature. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, Governor Romney was trying to go up the staircase, ascend. Uh, mm-hmm. By the way, the Kirkland uh, Mormon Temple was dedicated to the presidency, but I believe it's the presidency of, of the of Mormon Church. But it's interesting that God showed you that Mormon Temple because Governor Romney was being blocked from ascending to the presidency of the United States exactly. in That's- Ohio. In Ohio. And, and on election night, when the Ohio votes came in, all the news reporters on TV said, it's over. Mm-hmm. Rom- Romney's lost. Obama has been reelected. Mm-hmm. Instantly when Ohio's votes were, were announced. Yes, yes. In one of the counties, uh, if I recall, and I, and I could be corrected on this, was Coshocton or something like that, uh, way up, up in that area. And it happens to be the the county right by this Kirkland Temple. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and Did you see uh, any other significance in that dream that we haven't... Because we never talked about it on the radio. You talked to me privately about it. Mm-hmm. But is there any other significance that you've seen looking back? Well, uh, well, <laughs> my thoughts are that uh, when I saw that pharaoh like that Egyptian-like creature, all, all I could think of when I come out of the dream was, you know... The president of the United States, you know, he he is like a pharaoh. People have made a god out of him. It was sick the night of, uh, you know, that, that that the election was over with, and when he come out, it, it it almost sounded as if the people were worshiping him, and 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 you know, it was amazing. I could I had to well, stop. Well, I mean, watching. immediately afterwards, uh, the comedian Jamie Fox called him the Messiah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, of course, pictures have been, paintings have been drawn of him like he's the Messiah right. with the crown of thorns. And- well, I said throughout 2012, Obama will be America's pharaoh. He will be an evil taskmaster, a cruel, evil taskmaster. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. we only have about 15 minutes. Let's go into this last dream that you had November 24. Mm-hmm. Okay. O- okay, yeah. Th- th- this was in November. Um, <clears throat> and uh, what happened was is. In this dream, uh, I was immediately taken into the Oval Office. I was standing in, in, inside the Oval Office, actually looking at the President of the United States. He was behind the desk, standing behind the desk. And and when I stood in front of him, all of a sudden I heard a voice, and I know it was the voice of God, but, uh, but I heard the voice say, Weep and howl for the misery that shall come shortly. And... Um, then uh, all of a sudden I turned, and when I turned, there on the floor of the Oval Office 
was that eagle that I saw him shot back in December of uh, 2011. And I seen him walk behind the desk with that same smirk, that same arrogant smirk on his face that he had on the Truman balcony when he was standing up there. He comes out from behind the desk, and he walks over to the eagle, and he puts his foot on the neck of the eagle. Then at this point, he bends down and takes it by its head, and then he twisted it uh, uh, three times until the head of the eagle come off of its body. Then at that point, then I heard the voice say, the spirit of Rehoboam. Now, let me tell you, I had to go back and start searching this guy out, which you know, you already know, but I thought what was interesting about Rehoboam in the Bible is that, first of all, he, uh, uh, he was the successor, of course, of Solomon on the throne, but his name means he enlarges the people. And automatically when I saw that, I thought, big government. Spin, spin, spin. So he was a successor of Solomon, and he, he was, uh, you know, young when he was put on the throne, and and uh, although he was acknowledged um, as the rightful heir to the throne, yet there was a, a strongly felt desire to modify the character of the government. I thought that was interesting because of the burden of taxation uh, to which they had been su uh, subjected to during Solomon's reign was, you know, oppressive, but it was going to really get really oppressive. The, the Israelites pleaded with Rehoboam to, 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 to lessen the tax burden. But he, to alleviate their burden. But he did, they, the, he did the opposite. He, he mocked them and he increased their taxes. He increased their taxes. That's right. He met them in Shechem and, and, and consulted. And the funny thing is, the interesting thing is, is the scripture says that, that he consulted with the young, younger uh, uh, generation that he had grown up with that's right. He just dis he discounted. He would not listen to the advice of the he older would people. Not listen to the advice of the elders. But exactly. he, he took the advice of the younger people he grew up with. Of the younger generation. And so the Lord told you in this dream that the spirit of Rehoboam was on Barack Obama. Was upon him. Yes, yes, and 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 uh, yes, absolutely. And then, then. As I begin to look at him again, I, uh, of course, he, uh, he was dressed uh, in all black. Uh, he had a black suit on, a black tie, uh, a black shirt, black pants. Everything was total black, what I saw him uh, wearing. And then as I was standing, uh, looking directly at him, all of a sudden, his chest cavity around his heart began to open up. And his heart was exposed, and as I was looking in his heart, this thick, black, dark mist was swirling around his heart. And I knew that God was letting me see the evil that is really in that man. Now, at this point, he, he uh, walked over to the desk, and he, 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 he picked up a gavel in his hand, and the gavel... Uh, which it was part wood and, and part stone. The handle was wood and the head of the gavel was stone. And he hits a document on the desk. And when he hits this document on the desk, then all of a sudden I felt a shaking. And, I, I, and honestly, I felt like that my bed was shaking. I mean, it literally, it was shaking. I could feel it. And then an earthquake hit Washington. Now, as you said before, these are symbols. Some people can take it, you know, interpret it literally. But I see it as, as, as things that are spiritually hitting this nation. You know, something that's going to be devastating. We've got the Supreme Court this coming, uh, this year, getting ready to pick up, you know, the definition of marriage, uh, the, the things that are happening, uh, you, you know, and, and I'm thinking, Oh, we are heading into an incredible time. So he hits the stock, and all of a sudden, when he does, then I shoot up in the air. I was standing again above the White House. Then I saw the earth open up, 
and it went towards the Washington Monument and then towards the Jefferson Monument and at that point I began to see an odd color rain start falling like the, the color of fire or something and it started slowly coming down then it intensified little by little until the water started rising uh, at that point in Washington DC I could see the waters and then as the water started rising I went up higher into the atmosphere and I saw and I could see the, the map of the United States the waters left from Washington and begin to flood across the whole United States I've seen it here Maryland West Virginia Ohio Michigan Kentucky Indiana South Carolina until it completely went all across the United States on the desk of the President of the United States, that document had written on it, the final abomination. The and, final uh, abomination. Of uh, the final abomination. Uh, uh, Pastor, we've got about five minutes. Tell us, I know this, uh, you you got to come back for another program. We're, we, we have barely even touched this subject you also saw beams of light coming yes, out of the floodwaters. Yes, I, I, I'll, I'll say this. As I, as I was in the air, I, I, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can in the short time I have. But I saw America in this state of being covered with these floodwaters. Then all of a sudden, I, as I was up, suspended in the air, I could see these lights, beams of light quickly coming up, coming up out of the floodwaters, like a speed of light going quickly up in the air millions it looked like uh then at that moment i was taken higher above the world and that i could see it going up again all over the world and and, and uh at this point uh then i came back down to the earth as if i was back at the beginning of this dream and i heard a voice said the shifting has begun uh at this point i was looking over the top i was going across these churches, mega churches, I've seen them. And I heard a voice say, a breeding ground for sin. The people know not me, but play around their calf, their golden calf. And I knew that we had entered in, you know, we were in the time of the end, and it and, and, and will not be these large churches, but it will be prayer meetings where the saints will be gathering in secret, some of them. I mean, this is going to get to the point that we'll have to meet in secret. But the days of persecution had come up on this generation, and at this point, I was looking again at the homes that we had talked about before, and I knew that these people loved and served God, and I saw the homes of men and women that were gathered together in deep prayer across the nation, and I heard a voice said, the season is upon this nation, and brother, this is the, I'm telling you, it shook me, because you have set abomination before my eyes, I will set judgment before yours. And then I asked, then I could, then the voice, in, I heard, when will this happen? And I heard the voice repeat, after he will be sworn in. And then I woke up. Hi. I just wanted to share with you all a short testimony. Um, about a year ago, maybe a little more, my eight-year-old daughter had a vision. And what she saw was Jesus coming down in the clouds out of the sky. And there were people, there were people going up in shiny, she said, shiny, very, very, very shiny white robes to meet him in the sky. And the individuals who were not going up, because there were people that were left below on earth, looked confused. In her words, they looked weird, very weird. And they were asking why they were left behind. The... the there's another part to this and it, it takes an even stranger turn and that is the fact that my half sister who I just recently got in touch with um, a few weeks within the last couple weeks um, she has I, I came to find out she's married and she has children 
and I was telling her about this testimony and she said you're not gonna believe this but my daughter had a vision pretty much exactly like that um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that Jesus is coming soon we need to be ready are you ready Please pray, and please pray for my husband and daughter to be taken up and not left behind. Also, please everyone get yourself right with Jesus before it's too late. Um, since these dreams, my my feelings, my spirit, you know, um, just feels like something is about to take place. There is a very strong sense of urgency that I have been feeling lately. Um, please again repent and devote yourself to him and get yourself saved before it's too late. Anyway, here are my dreams. Um, on Monday or Tuesday, November 11 or 12, I can't remember exact day because I did not record this right away. So I dreamt in that in on that day, one of those days, I dreamt that Jesus came to me and gave me a quarter that had prayers or verses in them. He told me to use it when I get scared. The next thing I remember, I was looking for my quarter in my dream. I went into my office looking for it and found it laying in front of my printer. I also remember in that dream that I was wearing a large oversized white t-shirt that was like really long and big on me. So anyway, I walked over to my printer and picked up my quarter and then I started heading toward the door. Then immediately as I was heading toward the door, I heard loud voices that sounded like, I don't know, screaming, a lot of screaming, like very scary scream, like from hell. At the same time, I felt hands grabbed onto my oversized t-shirt, my white t-shirt, from the behind, from my back. And while it grabbed onto my t-shirt, I, you know, kept hearing the screaming and the hellish screaming sound. Immediately when it grabbed my t-shirt I yelled out Jesus, Jesus, Jesus three times and that's when I felt my husband my husband next to me waking me up from my dream. So um, that was the middle of November around the 11th or 12th of this year. Um, now this one is not a dream. Um, that same week, on the date of November 15, I felt a very strong presence of an angel in my room, um, in the you know room with me while I was trimming my dog's hair. I don't know how I knew this, but I just knew an angel was in the room with us. Um, I, I don't know how I, I knew, I just felt a very strong presence in the room and I just knew it was an angel. Uh, so that was on the 15th. Then the next night, November 16, in my sleep, I heard a voice in my sleep saying to me, judgment is coming in three years. Those were the exact words. And I believe I heard it say it twice. Judgment is coming in three years. Now when I woke up, I questioned the dream because no one knows, like the Bible says, no one knows the day or the hour of Christ's return. 
I even, you know, thought the dream could be from the enemy. So, there, you know, I'm not predicting anything. This is just what I heard in my sleep. Um, again, like I said earlier, I, I don't believe the exact time frame. I just believe they symbolize that the short amount of time that we have left before his return. So I probably wouldn't take the three years literally because no one knows like the Bible says. So anyway, when I went to bed on the night of November 27th, I prayed and asked God about Christians who are saved. I asked if all saved Christians will be taken up in the rapture before the tribulation or will some be left behind? And I remember around 5 to 5.30 a.m. in the morning, I remember I was kind of like waking up, you know how you're like halfway awake and halfway asleep still, but I remember I was kind of like waking up when I heard a voice in my head. This time it was in my head, it wasn't in my, you know, like I didn't hear it in my ears like I did when I heard that judgment is coming. But anyway, this one was in my head when I, as I was waking up. The language from the voice that I heard was kind of difficult to understand. It sounded more like, um, like poetry. Then it started to sound more like the language in the King James Bible version. Um, then the next thing I remember, the language became a little bit more clear to understand. And I remember these words that I heard. The voice said this. This is what the voice said. That there are believers, um, but they do not want to be persecuted or be martyrs for Christ. They do not want to know the truth or believe the word. So those were the words I remember hearing. And then that was it. Um, 